Nebraska rancher Carl Connells doesn't want a million barrels of crude oil moving across his pasture every day. There's a plum thicket over here next to the fence on our property. It'll be just a little bit to the south of there. And they'll scrape the soil back, and then the pipeline goes down southeast. He's talking about the proposed 2,700-kilometer Keystone XL pipeline that would carry oil from the tar sands of Canada to refineries on the Gulf of Mexico. Cattle walk along, step on this stuff. Connells, who fears pipeline construction would destroy the fragile, sandy soil of his grazing land, has refused a $15,000 offer from pipeline company TransCanada to access his property. I'm the fourth generation here. I'm just not going to sell out at a whim so they can build their pipeline. This area of Nebraska, known as the Sand Hills, has become the center of the most vociferous opposition to the project. Mostly, it's about water. The Sand Hills lay atop a vast underground body of fresh water called the Oglala Aquifer. The underground pipe would run straight through the aquifer. The water here is so close to the surface you can dig down less than a meter and hit it. In many areas, the pipe would be completely immersed. Opponents fear that a pipeline leak would poison this precious resource. And they have good reason to worry. Another TransCanada pipeline in operation for only a year has already sprung leaks nine times. These cattle are my, my family's cattle. Nurse Cindy Myers has been rallying opposition to the pipeline. One spill into our aquifer you know, it can spread miles. If our water is contaminated, we have no water for the cattle. We have no water for us to drink. And if we don't have water, we have nothing. On we Thursday, can't. Myers and other opponents will testify against the pipeline in nearby Atkinson, Nebraska. While many of the people who live here in the Sand Hills believe the pipeline threatens their environment and their livelihoods, Others, including businesses, union groups, and the oil industry, say it will generate thousands of much-needed jobs. John Kareckis is an official with the oil industry's lobbying organization. We hope that this $7 billion private sector investment is going to create up to 20,000 jobs, everywhere from the folks actually laying the pipe and welding it to everybody meeting the supply needs at the local hardware store, the, the restaurant, the bar, the hotel, the barbershop. Back on his ranch, Carl Connell says he'll fight to keep TransCanada off his land. No, it's still my property. I'm still paying the taxes on it. It's mine. I, I decide what I need to do with it. And I'm not going to let a foreign company come in here and invade on that and destroy my property. The final say on whether to build the pipeline rests with President Barack Obama. His decision is expected before the end of this year. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, in the Sand Hills of Nebraska.